Good morning. Uh, thanks for everyone for coming out on a Wednesday morning. I know it's your normal sleep-in day, but I'm told that you'll get your sleep in tomorrow, so the universe does remain in balance. And I, <laughs> looking across the back there, an awful lot of my good friends from the staff are here. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my name is Richard Light. And I'm finally graduating from high school this year. I've either been a student or teacher in high school for 45 years, so that's not bad. <laughs> well, that is to say I'm retiring this year. Now, a few of you up in the front here have been in my class over the past two years, but to most of you, I may be somewhat unknown. You must wonder why this old guy, good-looking old guy, but old guy <laughs> gets this prime-time chapel speech tape. Well, I suppose it's seniority, as I just suggested. I actually started teaching in 1978. I came to the Grove in 1986. I was a head of house for 10 years, assistant head of school and or associate head of school for the better part of 25 years. And I even served as acting head for an eventful six months while the head of school at the time, Mr. Haddon, was on sabbatical. So I have some sense of what this guy goes through. And I've earned my gray hair. He's got more than me, but I've got some. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mr. Runza and Mr. Robertson, for giving me this opportunity. I am, I am deeply thankful. A quick note, all of this year's grads have had their chapel talk reviewed by me. They've had to send them to me in advance. So you may be wondering who reviewed Mr. Light's chapel talk. Well, the good news is it was my wife. And I can tell you, and I assure you two gentlemen, that whenever she said, oh my goodness, you can't say that, I took it out. <laughs> also, a special shout out to this year's evening history class. I see some of you up here. Thanks for making my, <laughs> Thanks for making my last class so much fun and so rewarding. Okay, well, my walking song this morning was Renaissance by Paul Waldemar Horsville, better known as Baldy. Baldy was one of your predecessors as a student at the Grove. Some other alumni of the Grove include comedian Will Arnett, actor Matt Frewer, Skid Row lead singer Sebastian Bach, artists Nick and Charlie Burke, singer Martha Meredith, and actor and Red Talk host Katie Nolan. In addition to all these non-traditional success stories, Lakefield's alumni includes Paul Demery Jr., the head of Power Corporation, Ian Binney, a former Justice of the Canadian Supreme Court, David Miller, the former Mayor of Toronto, and of course, and of course, His Majesty King Felipe of Spain. Our graduates also include four Rhodes Scholars, Ali Binney, Glenn Deacon, Aaron Freeland Valentine, and Kim Rutherford. And I must not forget to mention Anne Anagani, who is the president of the Liberal Party of Canada and will be speaking to you at closing this year. And finally, Cody Cece, who plays defense for the Ottawa Senators at the NHL. So what's my point in mentioning all these alum this diverse group of alumni? It's simply the fact that it is such a diverse group. Lakefield is not a traditional prep for business independent school. Our revered alumni are not only the creme de la creme of Bay Street or Wall Street, though some of them work there. Our revered alumni include artists, actors, <coughs> comedians. And a few of our revered alumni didn't even get invited back for their final year. Well done, Bill or not. <laughs> Now, I came here from teaching at UCC uh, to Lakeville. It was 1986. And for me, it was a breath of fresh air, both physically on the campus and uh, spiritually. At Lakefield, I found a school that valued each student as an individual, and that allowed and encouraged students to be themselves. And, this is one of those important parts where I take my glasses off. <laughs> Wait for it. Celebrated characters as much as it celebrated character. Let me say that again. Lakefield celebrated and celebrates characters as much as it celebrates character. 
I escaped from the world of Toronto where schools have forced their students into a mold and joined a school where students are urged to be themselves and to grow into the person they want to be. So I can tell you now, here's the TV commercial I would make for Lakeview. So what we'd have is we'd be down in front of some school in Toronto, probably has a big clock tower on it, or maybe some other sort of Romanesque pillars or something like that. Standing out in front, there would be two rows of students, a row of boys and a separate row of girls, and they'd all be in their number ones, getting ready to go to class. There wouldn't be a smile on any of the faces. Think of it as two rows of zombies. <laughs> and then suddenly, one of the boys would say, Really? And one of the girls would say, No way! And then the two of them would take off their jacket, rip off their tie, and run away shouting, To heck with this! I'm going to Lakefield! Ah, <laughs> uh, the Lakefield difference. <laughs> it's always hard explaining the Lakefield difference to people who are not part of the school. At one rather dark point in the school's history during the interregnum between heads of school Haddon and Mr. Robertson, the school hired a consultant to determine how to fix our problems. I tried at some length to explain to this consultant that the Grove had a special character, and that in my opinion, our current troubles were the result of drifting away from that, that culture. Our school had a special culture. Well, Richard, she said to me, your school is not special. It's just a school like any other. <coughs> well, my response was more instinctive than anything else, and I was walking out of the room when I said it. But I said, well, it is special to me. Lakefield, it is special to me. It's very special to me. Over the past 29 years, I've worked with many wonderful people, many of them are in the back of this room, who have made this school special and who deserve my thanks. Indeed, when you're part of a staff team such as ours at Lakefield, everyone deserves to be honored. Having said that, here is a rapid fire list of a few shout outs. First, whoever, anyone who has ever lived on campus and worked as a head of house or a don or nurse or assistant head of school or head of school and your families. You are the rock on which this school stands. None of us would be here without you. To the alumni of this school who have come back to continue the culture and traditions we all hold here, Army, AJ, Jen, Shane, Liz, well, last week, Erica, Adam, Steph, Brendan, Leslie, and Zoe, clearly no jobs prices for Lakefield grads, thanks. <laughs> Four members remain from the senior management team of which I was a part many years ago. John, Heather, RJ, and Sarah, thank you for your resilience and courage as you work with Mr. Robertson to guide our school. Now, as you may know, you may not, but Mrs. McMahon was head of school for two years before Mr. Robertson arrived. Sarah, you broke through a concrete, steel, heavily reinforced glass ceiling when you became head of school. And through the quality of your leadership, you demonstrated for all to see why the ridiculous barriers to women's advancement that still exist in our society need to be torn down. Karen Stott, you have always kept the assistant heads, including me, in line. Indeed, some days it feels as though you keep the whole school in line. Mike Arsenault, you introduced me to the most important book I've ever read, The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. It explains the most important idea, the best idea anyone has ever had, evolution by natural selection. Simon Spivey, Debbie Buckman, and Todd Harris. Long before anyone could buy network learning products, you were the team that created and implemented the Online Learning Center, the hardware and software that enabled online organization, communication, and collaboration. That innovative approach served LCS brilliantly for many years, and it became a model for the commercial packages that would follow. To my son's favorites while he was a student here, class of all time. Teachers Tom Milburn, Stu Lee, Bruce McMahon.
Miranda Improv and comedy coaches Paul Mason and Greg McPherson. Debating and philosophy coach Manel Stambouli. Softball coach Jerry Bird. And, and postgraduate marathon mentor Rory Gilfillan. <laughs> and finally, David Haddon. You may not know him, he's my guy. Today's students will not know him, perhaps, but he was the head of the school from 1985 until 2007. He inherited a school that faced financial challenges but had a culture that made it strong. He brought the school into the modern age with co-education, technology, and even a gym. He refined and strengthened the school's culture so that transparency, inclusiveness, and consensus were the core of decision-making, and he made teaching through relationships the heart of our mission. He knew every student by name, and they knew he cared genuinely for their well-being. His legacy is all around us here at LCS and stretches across the globe into the wider LCS community. A better leader I've never met, a better man I shall never know. He asked me, by the way, to send his chapel ch talk to him in advance, so I didn't send it until midnight last night so he wouldn't come rushing after me to stop me from saying <laughs> I've been asked quite often what I intend to do once I retire. Fair enough. A couple of my options have recently been shut down, unfortunately. David Letterman's successor on late night has been announced. <laughs> and thanks to Mike Babcock, darn it, it now appears I will not be coaching the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> what I will do is keep running 10 days and maybe the odd half marathon. My wife and I plan to travel and see more of this beautiful world, and I plan to continue to learn. I have been one of the truly lucky people who has had a job that aligned with a purpose. My job has been teaching, but my purpose has been learning. One of those nice ones you could My being a teacher, being a teacher is a great way to learn, and being a learner is a great way to teach. Next month, I am retiring from my job as a teacher, but I will never retire from my job as a learner. Now normally at this point, most chapel talks move into a slideshow, but I'm going to go in a slightly different direction. Okay, so I want you to think of this as like Coach's Corner on Hockey Night in Canada. Right? It's a five minute se segment where an old school guy defends much maligned traditions. No, I'm not going to defend fighting in hockey, I'm against it, but I am going to speak in defense of an intellectual tradition that it seems to me is under attack, the search for truth. Ooh, the search for truth, big ideas. <laughs> okay, let me start by saying the search for truth, or truth, is very different than the search to clarify your own. And believe it or not, truth cannot be found on Google. Many years ago, we defined the search for truth at LCS as, an undertake, as undertaking a disciplined study of the state of human knowledge and the methods of inquiry used to establish this knowledge. There are some scary words in there. Discipline, inquiry, knowledge. But I have never thought such things were beyond the grasp of Lakefield students. We are not a composite high school. We prepare students for a university, as well as life, of course. The search for truth is difficult. Philosophers have long known that there is a difference between the real world out there and our perceptions of the real world in here, in our minds. <coughs> our brain analyzes the data that comes to us from our five senses and generates an internal image of what is out there. But if you've ever seen an optical illusion, you will know that our brains can easily misinterpret signals our senses send. In the modern world, even more of a challenge, when we get an increasing amount of our sensory input from various forms of technology, we have yet another level of potential confusion between what is true and what we perceive to be true. Okay, let's think for a moment about how media and marketing can distort the truth. I'll be interested to see if you get this part. But why do we do what we do? We drink Coca-Cola because we're darn sure it's the real thing. 
We use Apple computers because we want to think different. And we know that IBM gives us solutions for a small planet. We all know that if we go down the road to Subway, we'll eat fresh at Subway. And that KFC chicken is finger licking good. <laughs> we always just do it. We never leave home without it. And we're quite sure that the milk chocolate melts in our mouth, not in our hands. Actually, it gets worse. We play Grand Theft Auto a game of war on our computer, and then we wonder why we come to become desensitized to violence. We display only thin, beautiful, photoshopped models in magazines, and then we wonder why we have a distorted view of what it is to look normal. If you choose to think about it, and I think we should, it seems that we are so, excuse me, we are so inundated with media messages so oversaturated by social media chatter and clatter that our minds are being held captive by the moment and the immediate. There is no truth to be found there. Please don't get me wrong. Actually, I love technology. I was part of the team that brought the original laptop program to LCS. I actually have a master's degree in computer applications. I can't wait to get an iPhone 6 Plus as soon as my current cellular contract ends. Well, some of you told me it's a little too big. And you can follow me on Twitter at lifer 2 you. That's <laughs> lifer number two, letter U. Okay? <laughs> but having said that, we really are, all of us, swimming against the rushing river of information. Swimming against the rushing river of information unable to get our head to the surface to figure out where we are. It seems to me that sometimes we just need to shut off our computers and tablets and phones, or at least shut off our text, email, and Facebook feeds. Then we need to open a book, real or virtual, and try to learn about the great ideas that have been created by the great thinkers. Do we need another reason to apply ourselves to the search for truth? Well, please consider this. Somehow, from the random fluctuations of cosmic chance, the universe has produced us. A species which has the capacity to think about the universe that created us and our place in it. You and I, we are the lucky ones. We have inherited this capability. We're doubly lucky because since we have won the genetic lottery, and found ourselves living in the relative prosperity of Western society in the early 21st century. And there's a third reason we're lucky. As I did last evening, I just took a little walk around this campus. I looked around. And my gosh, when I walk around this campus, when you look around this campus, look at where we get to go to school, all of us, together. I think we have to agree with I. Norman Smith, another alumni of Lake who said of his time here, we were the lucky ones in a world that was and is filled with many less lucky ones. <coughs> we were enabled to discover that we have a mind that just might improve with further use. So, I urge you to read some serious books and find out about the amazing achievements humanity has made in the search for truth. You never know. It might just lead you in a direction you never considered. If nothing else, I think it will challenge you. It will lead you to challenge what passes for the obvious. In our modern, market-driven, media-stimulated, technology-simulated world, what we call the obvious is very superficial. The more I have learned, the more I've come to get convinced that the obvious is difficult to prove and often wrong. Okay, good news. Coach's Corner is over. So let's get back to the main speech, and we have arrived at a segment I like to call Lifer's Tips on Life. <laughs> I am so glad that Lakefield makes building leadership skills and values an explicit part of his program. Many, if not all of you, will at some point in your lives find yourself in a position of leadership. If you do, you will no doubt become aware that in your position you possess a certain amount of power 
over the lives of others. My advice about leadership concerns how you should use that power, because power is a massive tool, and how you use it reflects your deepest values. If you do find yourself in a position of power, I urge you always to remember your responsibility to those below you. Please remember that those above you have the power and privilege to look after themselves, but those below you may have only you to protect them. The golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, applies with particular impact to those with power. I was reminded recently, actually chatting with David Haddon, uh, of an adage used to prepare summer camp directors, of which I was one many, many years ago. The adage goes, the director should treat the staff the way she or he wants the staff to treat the campers. That's it in a nutshell. If you want the campers to be treated with kindness and being able to be the best they can be, then that's how you should treat the staff. You will no doubt accomplish many things in your lives after you leave Lakefield, but I can assure you of one firm fact. Ultimately, you will not be remembered for your resume of achievements. Ultimately, you will be remembered for how you have treated people. And I can tell you with confidence that the old saying is very true. People will very often not remember what you said or what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Okay, time to finish up. I hope you enjoy my walkout song as you leave the chapel. It's a song that was written, actually, by King Solomon in the 3rd century BC. It was revised and set to music by Pete Seeger in the 1950s and was recorded by the folk rock band The Birds in the 1960s. It reached number one on the pop music charts the year when I was 12 and a half years old in December 1965. Also, there will not be a hug line today. <laughs> Political correctness and all that, but in fact, there's a good reason for it. It's because I need to leave the chapel quite quickly after this talk, because I am taking my lovely and intelligent wife out for a sumptuous, lovely brunch this morning, and I want to be sure we get to Tim Hortons before they stop <laughs>
So please, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And please, please, take care of this school. It is special to me. It is special to so many others. And I hope it will always, always be special to you. Thank you. Have a great day.